And look at this rear 275-30 and that front 245-30-20. Huge difference when you look at it right next to each other. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm out here in the garage again late night doing some stuff with my car. Decided to do a video on uh, wheels and getting the uh, 20s to fit on uh, this 2IS. I see a lot of questions all the time on the groups and the forums about fitting 19s, fitting 20s and these uh, bigger wheels on this car and I just wanted to do a video on my wheels and uh, what you need to look for. Trying to fit big wheels onto your car and uh, getting it to fit right with minimal adjustments and uh, cutting and trimming and what you need to do so stay tuned. Man if you guys don't have a unicorn scooter in your house man you you're missing out you gotta have a unicorn scooter. Anyway so this is uh, my front wheel it's a 20 by 8 it's actually when I bought these wheels I bought them used back when probably a year not not even a year after I made mean, three or four months after I got the car I have a 2007 and these luckily came off a 2006 IS and uh, the specs on them weren't that great I mean they, they were the size I needed 20s they were three-piece wheels and they were pretty cheap I think I got them for 1500 bucks with some bald tires I was able to ride those tires for maybe like another three or four months I got them because you know they were fairly cheap and, and they fit the car I didn't even know if they fit the car or not the, the person selling it uh, I think I don't know if it was a wheel shop or some other shop that got it secondhand somehow, but they sold it to me. I got them, put them on a the car, and they fit perfect. So, and they came with sensors in that they were like bolted inside or they were strapped inside the wheel. I figured that out when I had to change tires out uh, that there were sensors in them, and I put my own sensors in them at the time. And I went through a whole bunch of issues with sensors initially because uh, I I have them now where I'm, I'm I've got them mounted on the inside barrel right here I actually drilled this hole um, back in 2010 which was about 10 years ago when I was rebuilding these wheels after I've had them for about two years I believe the the chrome and and uh, the finish I didn't like the black finish that they were really dark gunmetal almost black finish at the time you know I, I originally had them strapped inside with some uh, some big bands they're basically just uh, big hose clamps and they kept falling out I tried the there, there was like a screw that you can um, screw to the back side of this I tried that that didn't work out too well either it kept on breaking the guys at the tire shop always over tightened them so eventually I said screw it all my friends in the tire tire and wheel business they just drilled it I mean the even the guys that were building these wheels down in Miami that I knew they just drilled the barrel so I that's how I did I just got a drill bit big enough for the hole drilled it and it's worked ever since I, you know, I haven't had any problems so it's I've got that main or the, the TPMS valve back here I got my main air valve angled up there and uh, you know it's been all good on these three-piece wheels I've rebuilt them twice the first time I didn't really rebuild them I just took them apart and refinished the faces and I didn't even separate the barrel the, the lips and the barrels uh, the second time I did, I actually pulled everything out. I actually sent the, the chrome lips off to get stripped so I could polish them. So now I've got polished lips on these right here. Uh, they, they need to be maintained. That's the only problem with polished lips, they, that you need to maintain them. But then the chrome lips corroded. So, you know, I'll trade uh, main, maintaining polished lips for uh, corroded chrome lips any day. Back to the fitment. So, yeah, the fitment on these. It's, it's very important, especially on these cars, you know, you, you know, you hear about offsets, you hear about width, you hear about all that, but one of the main things you got to figure, figure out first is the disc, you know, high disc, low disc, especially if you have 350 front brakes. So my, this is my front wheel right here. So it's got a high disc on it, which means that, you know, the, the distance between here and, uh, you know, that, that part of it is pretty thick, right? So it's designed to clear the big brakes. So that's one thing that you have to be aware of when you're getting wheels. Uh, the one, you know, this forging, this face forging on this 20 is, uh, it, it's not that aggressive. I mean, you know, you can see it kind of comes out. It's a, it's a nice square wheel as far as the, the lip design, but you know, it kind of goes out and then flattens out, right? So it's it's not a concave, it's not a convex design, it's kind of a flat design, but it's, you know, it was designed to clear big brakes. So even now with the 14 inch uh, 
GSF sport brakes I have on there. I have like literally probably like a three quarter inch of space. So they could have gotten more aggressive with this, but they, I guess they were pretty conservative on it. They could have put a bigger lip on here and a shorter lip on the backside, moved this in more and then designed it with a, a lower disc and it would have still cleared the brakes. Uh, you see a lot of more aggressive ones with big lips. They'll get close and some of them don't even clear big brakes. Same with the rear. The rear, the rear they definitely could have gone more. Uh, it's a pretty conservative lip design on, on this wheel. You can see the, the disc on the rear here. It's, it's pretty low already. I don't know how much lower they can get without really, uh, I mean, I guess they could, they can move that lugs, the lugs further out and made it thinner, but I'll click on the back side here. Yeah, see. See the disc is pretty low right there. Could have been, yeah, they could have done another maybe half inch on that, on that disc and could have been better. Get, give it a little bit more lip. So yeah, and uh, these come with, they come with these hub centric rings. The Toyotas of one of the lower, they're the second smallest center bores about 60. I think Subaru's got the lowest at 56. Yeah, the 60.1 millimeters is the bore for the, and I believe this bore is like 70. So these, these uh, forgings are usually designed to, to work with a lot of different cars. I think the offsets on these are probably in the 30s, maybe in the 40s on both these wheels, which is very conservative. But you know, the aggressive ones get down in the 20 Any wheel with a 20 offset for this car is not gonna fit without major trimming. 20s and below on the offsets are usually designed for Infinities, like Nissans and Infinities, which are much more aggressive on their their hub designs. I mean, that's it's got a lot to do with the actual hub on the car. See, like on Lexus and Toyota, they they, they design these hubs pretty thick. Where uh, Nissans, they're a little thinner, so um, so the offsets can go higher, and you get much more aggressive, big lips on those kind of cars. Especially uh, same with European cars and BMWs. But yeah, Lexus, you can't really go too aggressive on it without major trimming on the car to fit. So continue on the specs with these guys. So the front is a, a, a 20 by eight and a half. The rear is a 20 by 10. So the front I'm running a 245 30 20 and the rear I'm running a 275 30 20. 275 30 20 is probably the biggest you can go on this wheel uh, or this car. You could go 285. I've seen some guys go 285 with a little bit of trimming, but 285 you need about a 10 and a half or maybe an 11 inch uh, wide rim to fit. So this one is, yep, right there, 275. It's a Yokohama. I've been using this Yokohama on my rear for a long time. It, it was pretty cheap. I think I, I, I really bought these by price. So this thing, I think I paid maybe 180 bucks each for one of these Yokohama S drives. The front, I was running Falcons for the longest time. And in the last tire change, I ended up getting some Nitto Evos. And <laughs> the only reason why I got these tires were, th there was a price mistake on Discount Tiger Tire Direct. And I picked these up for maybe like, I think 70 or 80 bucks. It was cheap as hell. I mean, I, it was, well, at the time I was like, man, I get, you know, two of these tires for one of a normal Falcon. So I just picked it up just for the hell of it. It's got a lower uh, tread rating, uh, which means it's a softer compound. It's going to wear faster. But I mean, for 70 or 80 bucks that I paid for it, I don't care. These, these have a really... Um, uh, curved in design so they don't really rub as much my Falcons used to rub a lot because they were very square uh, These got you know these kind of have the edges on the inside So they don't rub as much the rear the rear Yokohama is also pretty square But my car's got a lot of clearance so and it clears everything I had to make no modifications on the rear or the front to really fit these on considering how low I, I've gone so on the rear I've actually looked in here before and it everything barely clears. I mean right on here it I think at, at one time it was just it was barely rubbing that little nut and it wore it down just enough so it, it would fit the, the, I think that the tire was rubbing up on that and then even here you can see see that little uh, spot there when with the suspension compresses up and down it's been touching that and rubbing and it's kind of worn out but that's the only real rubbing that I've ever had on the inside and it's just on this this lining it's not even anything structural in here as far as the outside, no modifications ever on the outside here, and that you know that's because this is so conservative on the specs that that it was designed not to to even touch the edges here with um, with a tire combination that I've got on it. And you know you you hear a lot of people 
that roll these fenders. I've never been a fan of roll. I don't think I've ever rolled a fender on any of my cars, even on the Hondas. We usually always just took the grinder to it and just took it down as much as we could uh, using a grinder. And that usually helped uh, enough to, to get a get thing with, you know, trying there. to roll it is because you fold this paint and then you, you risk screwing up your paint on your quarter panel. At least if I shave it down and I'm pretty careful, I'm not gonna break my paint or bend my paint. I'm gonna, you know, mess up the seam back here, but usually you leave just enough to hold the structure on that. So that, you know, this is the, the rear as far as fitment goes. Not much uh, issues for me at least. If I were to go more aggressive, yeah, that definitely would be an issue because one of my cousins ran some, some 20s that were designed more for a, uh, an infinity with a low offset and uh, yeah he had to trim a lot out here to get it fit even with thinner tires I think he might have ran like a 255 or 265 tire so onto the front and the front I haven't had really much issues as far as changing you know the, the rubbing either the main issue on the 2IS is always going to be this bracket right here you know you got to trim the, the metal right down to that edge and then you your, your best bet is to relocate trim this little tab your bumper tab whether it's OEM or aftermarket conversion bumper like I have and kind of get it as close as you can and relocate that nut so the, so you don't break that tab because once you break that tab you see all these guys that use that you know those two hooks with the rubber band and all that crap which looks kind of ghetto to me so I don't like that um, but overall you know my fender lining's pretty much been intact its whole life and I haven't had really any issues up here you know you're gonna lose I've lost all the clips on the, the two clips on the top side, but that's not an issue. Uh, I did kind of have to bend the tabs back on either side of this. This tab right there, you see the, the paint's worn on the fender. And then this tab over here needs to be bend, bent back so it wouldn't, doesn't rub. But other than that, you know, you could, that's really the only modifications. You see, you know, fender lining, I have a little bit of rub there, maybe a little bit of rub there, but overall, there's not much issues. I think the only modification I really did was I had to heat this up with a heat gun and push it back right there. You can see it was wearing there and it was rubbing a lot. So I, I bent that back yeah, with other than uh, shaving or anything. And you know, my car's also got that camber kit. So yeah, my, I've got the SPC ball joints. I actually used the one IS. This is way before there was parts for the two IS. So I used the one IS kit. I had to shave the arm down a little bit to fit it but it worked just perfectly fine with the one IS. The one thing with the one IS versus two IS, I had to put a, a washer here. It didn't come with that washer. And even then with that washer on this one, I just used the Honda washer from uh, one of my Honda shocks from back in the day from my uh, bucket of bolts. So that, that worked great. I've got this pretty much adjusted to zero camber up front for no wear on this the car. The boot that came with it was a red boot and that thing probably lasts me about eight years. I ended up calling SPC to order uh, new boots and these boots were actually, they call them the Honda boots. And they were only, I think they were only like five bucks uh, shipped. Uh, the, the boots themselves were like a dollar something and then the rest of it was the cost to put for them to put in an envelope and ship it to me. But other than that, yeah, I mean it's, pretty easy modification to get my 20s to fit. Your situation might be much different depending on how aggressive you are on your wheels. And as far as clearance on the control arm, you can see right here, my, my wheel barely clears that. And you can see where every time I put the wheel on and off, it kind of rubs there. So it, it's kind of worn down that little spot. But other than that, that's the only issue I've ever experienced with the with rubbing, you know, even the control arm. You, yeah, you can see the lip of the rim here. That's the tire rubbing that control. So you see, I got my 20s back on, lowered, the car's lowered. This is my normal riding height. As you can tell right there, it's very, very conservative. I could go out a little bit more on here, probably another five millimeters or so, but um, it's not like that. I've got, I know I've got the space for it back here at least. On the front, when it's lowered down, you see my normal riding height here. Yeah, this the front is is pretty good as far as flushness and and all that. Well, it's not not that flush either, but it's good enough for for not rubbing as much and drivability and still being low. In the back, yeah, you can see right there. It's got plenty of room left. 
and actually I actually raised this up a little bit more when I was on springs I was actually tucking a little bit more back here than it is now with the coilovers I was able when I got the coilovers on here I was able to dial it in so the front and the back look a lot more easy. Hope you guys like my rambling about my wheels on this car or uh, on this video uh, and uh, maybe you got some information from it about uh, trying to fit some wheels on your car. It all comes down to the specs. Uh, you got to know your specs. You got to test fit the wheel, make sure uh, it fits. And if it came off another Lexus IS, that's probably your best bet. Either a Lexus or even a GS. The GS basically has the same suspension ge geometry as this car. So if it can fit a GS, it'll, pr it'll probably fit an IS pretty well. So um, anyway, if you guys like this type of content, uh, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Talk to you guys later.